My name is Bond. James Bond. James Bond. British secret agent James Bond 007 pays his respects to a lost loved one and gets revenge on an old adversary. Meanwhile, a British spy ship is sunk, taking with it the valuable ATAC device. A marine archaeologist couple, the Havelocks, are assigned to retrieve the ATAC, but are viciously murdered by Gonzalez, leaving only their daughter Melina to witness the event and vow revenge. Secret agent James Bond is brought in to retrieve the ATAC, and his first step is to track down Gonzalez. James Bond is captured, but Gonzalez is murdered at the hands of Melina Havelock, and James Bond and Melina escape together. James Bond identifies the man who hired Gonzalez as Leopold Locke and trails Locke to Cortina. James Bond's contact in Cortina introduces him to Cristados, a man with means and connections, and a budding skating protege named Bibi. Bond finds that Melina has also arrived and nearly falls into a trap. Bond convinces Melina to return to Greece, and Bond finds a young admirer in his hotel room. After an ice cream and some skiing, Bond is under attack by Eric Kriegler. But after a few narrow escapes on skis, Bond gives his attackers the slip. Bond gathers a little more information from Bibi, but Bond's contact is taken out. Bond returns to Greece where he greets Melina, and then rendezvous with Cristados who tips off Bond about a potential foe in the form of Columbo. Bond engages with Columbo's mistress, Liesel, and after an evening of oysters and espionage, Liesel is taken out by Locke and his goons. But Bond is captured and brought to Columbo, who turns out to be more than Bond initially thought. Columbo brings Bond to see Cristado's operations firsthand and gets revenge on Locke in the process. James Bond has an underwater rendezvous with Melina, and the two make a plan to retrieve the ATAC themselves. Everything goes according to plan until a few uninvited guests show up. Bond and Melina are captured by Cristados, and the two are keel-hauled and almost fed to the sharks, but together manage to escape. All seems lost until they get an unlikely tip, which leads Bond and his new allies to an abandoned monastery. The team infiltrate the monastery, Bond takes out Eric Kriegler, and Columbo takes out his old enemy Cristados. Bond destroys the ATAC before it reaches the hands of the Russians, and Bibi gets a new sponsor. And James Bond and Melina go for a midnight swim. Written by Richard Maybaum and Michael G. Wilson, and directed by John Glenn, 1981's For Your Eyes Only. Yes, indeed. Uh, we got a really great film here, don't we? Uh, we do. We do. And at the uh, not to spoil the ending, but honestly... We're hitting a sweet spot as far as I'm concerned. Yes, and this is also a very special film because I believe this is the first James Bond film you've ever seen. I, I, yeah, it is. This okay. is the first one I can... I mean, this is the first one I, I consciously am aware of. I mean, I, okay, I feel okay. like I've probably uh -huh. seen them on TV or here and there before that, but it's the first one I can literally remember seeing it was on cable when we were kids so i feel like that whole summer it was on uh yeah this was the one and i kind of went like this is who james bond i'm in i'm i'm in sign me up <laughs> this is the one that that truly made an impact you know for yes, you absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah big time i mean this this one honestly it's um i, I mean you could be sure this this one's going to be kind of a gush fest because I know I, I really feel and to this day, I feel like this is one of the best James Bond films ever. And I really absolutely the and, I, and watching it today just to kind of prepare I, I, again, I can watch it today and get really excited about it and think, man, they really just do. They hit all the notes in this one. Uh, they really do. It's, it's amazing how much they do in this film and they do it sort of spot on. 
Um, you know, I, I get all the fave, all the best elements of James Bond is in this one. First, we should back up for a second. After Moonraker, Roger Moore sort of made an announcement that he wasn't going to return as Bond or didn't want to or what mm. have you, or he was done. Yeah. Um, so they screen tested uh, some people and they actually wrote that opening scene there when he visits uh, Tracy's grave. Mm hmm. They wrote that specifically just because in case they get a, you know, they had a new bond that it would also immediately he'd have a link to the past mm. and um, they could, you know, sort of start running. So, okay. yeah. And I'm glad they kept that in there for Roger Moore because it's really a, a terrific way to start the film, I think. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. I, I think this is honestly one of the best pre-titles of the whole bunch. First of all, I, I love that it's a self-contained pre-titles which is kind of pretty rare uh i love that it it's tracy's grave it is the the revenge on blofeld even though again part of that was the rights to blofeld sort of still being tied up so they couldn't do it yes uh so they sort of just did this and it was kind of implied it was blofeld not exactly but i mean for all practical for all practical purposes i almost feel like this is the best blofeld we've ever got frankly really uh, I, I the only told, thing I, I don't like that 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 line. I defy you with any contention. In stainless steel. I well, never yeah. like that delicate test I still don't and I still don't quite get it after all these years. <laughs> I, I, I don't either. And every time I feel like I've read something that kind of gave like a definitive answer, like what that was, I still kind of go back. I'm like, what what huh? What? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if I've ever actually gotten it. Yeah, it's a terrible line, actually. I mean, I know it's it's meant for to be fun. I I think the way this unfolds and everything, um, and his Blofeld, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of disrespecting him in a little way. I know he's the villain, and you know, yeah. And I don't mind him being scooped up by the helicopter. I think all that stuff is cool and everything. Yeah. I just don't. Th I don't think it's time for. Well, I don't know. It's okay. I, it, it, I'm not it crazy. Falls, I'm not crazy. Yeah. The, wait, the part when he's on the thing and banging on the window, it definitely does fall apart. Uh, yeah. Or at least it 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 devolves from what it started out as. Uh, but I do, I mean, not, like, seriously, when I say this is the best Blofeld, honestly, it, there's a couple things I have in mind. First of all, I like the fact that you're kind of not seeing his face. Like, you're, yeah, it's, it's cool. kind of hearkening back to that, you know, from Russia with Love, Thunderball. Again, he was always the best when you never actually saw him. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the voice work is tremendous. Good afternoon, Mr. Bond. Don't concern yourself with the pilot. One of my less useful people. Uh, he's got a very sinister voice and that maniacal laugh. I almost think that's a very, very good interpretation of Blofeld. Um, the fact that he is still in the neck brace. It almost like they sort of forgot about diamonds and they're they're doing the Blofeld I, again, kind of the earlier Blofelds, but yeah. but sort of ending off with the 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 Savalas Blofeld from Honor Majesties. So I and and just the helicopter stunts, by the way, are pretty tremendous. And yes, you know, I mean the the helicopter stuff is great. So Terrific. and I I feel like even though the score in a lot of this film, I'll talk about that more later. For me, kind of has ups and downs. I feel like in this part, it's an up. So. I, I think this whole thing is just tremendous. I kind of love it. In fact, I, I was doing the um, the James Bond and Friends podcast the other day. Mm -hmm. We were talking about, like, if we were going to put together a double feature, what the, what I sort of had come up with was uh, Honor, Magic, Secret Service, and For Your Eyes Only. Because oh. I love that if you sort of put these two back to back, how they kind of pair up. Very cool. Yeah. You know? And, and two two great films. Yeah, great films, and I like that the tones of, of them are, are reasonably similar, you know. And, and again, we're obviously going to talk about the tone of this film because, I, like I said, I, I really think it hits that sweet spot where it's, it's very down-to-earth, but not in a way that pulls it down. One of the things I noticed about it when I was watching it today is that a lot of even just the gags that they do in some of the other films are still here in this one, but the presentation is so much better because again, you feel like you're sort of in the real world, you know, that, that cartooniness of Moonraker, while it's fun in certain ways, that's kind of gone here. And I feel like you're, you're kind of getting like that sort of same excitement and adrenaline and romance. And, you know, you're getting all of that, but it's a little more 
easily absorbed and it's it's easier to grab onto because the world it's inhabiting is real if that makes sense no it does and like even in the action scenes um instead of just pushing a bunch of buttons and this one he's actually using his wits yes. in order to escape and uh that's much more exciting don't get me wrong it's cool to see him push a button and see some crazy stuff come out but you know um at the end of the day it's better it's better when bond uses his wits to get out of a situation rather than just have a convenient little button to push exactly exactly because yeah. again it, I mean, the, the oohs and ahs of the button pushing in Moonraker, again, it's fun in a, in a popcorn kind of way. But here you get that sort of thrill of, again, Bond is in a pickle. Yes. And, I mean, honestly, I, I love the the car chase, the, the car chase in the little yellow um, car in Greece. I love that. Yeah. Love it. And I love how it starts off with the Lotus exploding yes and, you know what i mean and it's a very significant nod to the idea okay we're not doing gadgets in this movie we're kind of getting back to like you said bond using his wits and his skills to get out of this mess and i mean and, and, and it's a i mean seriously that is a great car chase yeah it's almost like a direct criticism almost of moonraker there with the car exploding i think and it's right. just like he just throws the keys away he's like well i hope you have a car <laughs> you know honestly yeah. and if it's not yeah i mean if it's not a criticism i mean it's at least an acknowledgement right not doing yeah. it this time around right exactly uh, so i yeah i just love that and, and again the ensuing car chase is great i mean it, and again i love the locations i love that he's driving through these little the, these little towns where the the people are there and it, again it has this kind of very realistic feel to it so yeah no the locales are terrific here mm. and i think right. also the, too like with john glenn uh it's his first direct his directorial debut here um after yes. being a second unit director and editor on the uh, pre some of the previous james bond films and i think he was hungry here and he really wanted to make a great james bond film and it shows like i said I love the earthy, gritty tone of this film. And I hate, gritty is not the word because, again, this is an elegant looking film, too. It is. You know, but again, I feel like it's occupying the real world. And that's why I can get very excited about it. I mean, th th w there's one scene that I absolutely adore. It's when they first get back to Greece. Bond runs into her again. And she says, I have to go into town. And they just do this kind of walk through through parts, uh, some part of Greece and, and, and just kind of watching what the locals are doing. And they're trying out local food. Yeah. And I'm like, that's great. I love that. It's terrific. I, why we don't. There should be. Honestly, I feel like in every Bond film, there should be like a mandate that every film has to have something like that. Where, where it's it's literally just sort of Bond exploring a, a, a new area and, and, and taking advantage of, of, of a local, you know, again, a beautiful scenic area and, and kind of mingling with locals and, and seeing what the locals are doing. I, I absolutely love that stuff. But, Joe, it's run, jump, and shoot, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, some of the, yeah. the latter-day ones are good. They have some, some great yeah, stuff. No, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. No, but you're right. I mean, honestly, that that is the problem, is that we are so focused on just – Keeping the plot moving, keeping people's you know eyeballs wide open on the screen, and and not taking a minute to breathe. And, and honestly, I just I'm like, this is what James Bond is, though. This is this is exactly what he's all about. I have a thing about pacing in movies and contemporary pacing um, that we can get to at a later date. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, well, first we should also say this is one of the first movies without Bernard Lee. Um, Oh, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, because he had passed, after the filming of Moonraker, he had passed away, sadly. Uh, we get we get this, uh, it's uh, James Villers, I think is is the uh, actor's name. Uh, I'm sorry, is, he's playing Bill Tanner. Right, right, right. Chief of Staff Bill Tanner. He, uh, the actor himself said he was disappointed that he thought he would, you know, continue on in the series as M, but they, um, ultimately, they decided they wanted somebody older, like in their 70s. But uh, supposedly this actor, too, he was a big drinking buddy of Peter O'Toole. So he was... Uh, oh, is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure he knew how to drink. But, um, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. he's very... Um, what's the word I'm looking for with him? Um, he's kind of abrasive. Is it a, not really abrasive, but there's something about him that, you know, it's almost yeah. like he could barely tolerate Bond, you know? <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know, he kind of reminds me of a little bit. He's, he's sort of like the M in Never Say Never Again, frankly. Yes, I, I, you know what yeah. I mean. After the, after the uh, credit scene, you know, we see the um, the St. George's. Um, they accidentally pull yes. in a mine, and that's an interesting scene too. 
Yeah. yeah. You know what's funny, though? When I was watching it this time, I, I realized that all the crew members, they're like pretending to be busy. <laughs> You know, you know right? when they're doing the whole thing. <laughs> and there's like a thing, you know, yeah. when he's uncuffing, you know, handcuff, he's like, my watch. And that was like for the audience's benefit because it's like, you know, if you're with somebody, you'd just be doing, you know, you do this routine probably every day, you know. So you'd right, just right. be like, yeah, uh, you know, whatever. I don't know. But right, anyway, right. I, I do. It's, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. And, and that was kind of a neat thing, like how this whole incident, this inciting incident happens quite by accident, which is, t- but it's totally believable. It mm. wasn't like, you know, super mad Drax, you know, as uh, yes, the missile. Yes, the, you I, know, yeah. I totally agree. I like that a yeah. lot, actually. And I, I sort of, I kind of feel like that's, a, again, sort of part of the whole overall theme is that it's very understated. And again, it's just sort of a real life occurrence, something happened. Uh, you know, it's a bad thing that happened and it's, you know, it's cinematic. I mean, there's an explosion, you know, it's okay. And it made sense. But yeah, it wasn't like the big super baddie sank the ship right. to do something it's just a thing that happened it sets the the plot in motion uh yeah so i totally agree that that works great i love that uh i love the attack on the havelocks yes but with the airplane from gonzalez i think that works really well and again i love her character by the way i guess we could talk about uh, her melina havelock I, played by carol bouquet and, and again stunning she she really makes a great bond girl and by the way her character is lifted from one of the short stories. In the short story, it is very similar where her parents have been murdered. Bond is sent to uh, to basically get revenge for the death of this couple. And he runs into uh, Melina, whose name is different in the short story. Uh, but she's also out for revenge. She also uses a crossbow, by the way. I think it might, or it might be a bow and arrow. I can't remember if it's, which one it is. But but anyway, the character is based on a real character from one of Fleming's stories. So I like that she's incorporated in this, and I like how she's driven. I mean, again, you know, in a lot of the James Bond films, it, it almost feels like they're trying to sort of get, find a reason why Bond would have a female companion in the story. And sometimes it, it doesn't work quite right. But here it works perfectly, I think. I, 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 I think that in the series, this is a very unique kind of a character. Where she's driven by revenge, and there she so she's after the same person that Bond is, and they, I think they try to do it again later. Other in other films, doesn't work quite as well, uh, but here I, I I think it works great here. You know, I really like you know it what a lot. Too? She has really good chemistry with Moore, and even though she's uh, the age difference is quite quite big, um, I don't know. Mm. It just it kind of works. Um, it's not it's, it's not yeah, like you know with Tanya Roberts, you kind of feel it later in View to a Kill. The age difference right, here, yes, you don't. Yeah. I don't anyway. You know, Rogers, he's still doing okay in this. He's, I mean, he is kind of starting to show his age, and he's kind of um, settling into, like, a more seasoned character. Uh, but it's not jarring yet. I mean, you know, I, I notice as he's, as he's getting a little older, he's starting to get that Adam West look, which is, again, it's but it's not bad. So, but, I, I yeah, she, I mean, she's younger, but it's not shockingly younger. Right? But, yeah, you're right. Later on, it's going to get a lot worse. Actually, it's interesting enough, too, the actress Carol Bouquet, she also auditioned for the role of Holly Goodhead. So uh, that would have been interesting. <laughs> mm. But, no, I think I, I think and she got the better yeah. role here. This is definitely a more, uh, this yeah. is much more well-written and uh, more fleshed out. Yeah. And uh, I think it's very good. And um, I got to say, you know, jumping ahead a little bit in the story, uh, the, the assassin Gonzalez when uh, yes, Bond yes. goes to his, I'm like that Gonzalez knows how to live, huh? I mean, he's not going to live for long, <laughs> but <laughs> right. I'm like, damn! I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. this assassin stuff uh, pays pretty well. That's right, <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he keeps uh, he keeps uh, people hanging around his cool his pool to dance and just dance around the pool. Yeah, and, and he's everything. got like, he seems to have a bunch of bodyguards. I'm even surprised he did the dirty work himself. It's kind of. <laughs> Right? Seriously, actually. Yeah, so I, that. I don't know. I, I don't I tell, know but that's another I don't know if great... that came from the money he got for that or if he was already well established. It's, you know, it does, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure he's probably still right. already there. But yeah, I, I that's another great scene, by the way. Um, I love Locke, who just sort of chills out in the background. Oh, yeah, he's great. I, I yeah. love that scene. Again, when, when the murder happens and everybody starts to go crazy and Bond's go, going loose and the guy starts next to him starts to get up and he just kind of puts his hand out like, yeah, just, yeah. Just hang yeah. out a second. You know, because again, I don't have a, I don't have a horse in this race. Yes, and he takes and he just takes his loot and leaves. I love it. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, what a well crafted character, and again, what a well thought out. See, again, I love the uh, th- that kind of intrigue and mystery around these characters. They're not stupid right. characters. 
You know, I mean, I it love even that. takes the money that uh, Gonzalez previously had thrown yes. to the, girl, the, the girls on the. <laughs> I love that. Yes, yeah. it's so cool. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, honestly, it, it's a really well thought out, smart script, and it's got smart characters. In yes. it. I love it. But and it's taut and tight and taken seriously. But then you could have uh, scenes like this fun action chase scene, you know, with the cars. Yeah. Yes. Right, exactly. That's the thing. I mean, a, a, a smart film that, again, sort of exists in the real world, it doesn't lose anything. You can still have the exciting action yes. scenes, and they still work great. In fact, and on some levels, much better. Yeah. Because- I mean, seriously, the, the, in the car chase, again, when, like, he's struggling with the gear shift, and she's like, you know, go backwards yeah. and forwards. Like, she, she knows how to get the car started right, or right. whatever. I mean, like, like, that, like, little stuff like that is tremendous. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. You know, I mean, because, again, it keeps you on your toes. y'all. It keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't know how he's going to get out of this in this dinky little car. Yeah. And it's so refreshing after, like, you know, a couple movies of doing a lot of gadgets, especially in Moonraker. Um, yes. It was nice to get back yes. to this, you know, a bond of his yeah. wits. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Uh, and I, I, I love after this. I love how it c- continues on. And again, she's still after, on, you know, she's still looking for some revenge and all that good stuff. And so I. I yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a gushy one here. This is gonna it's gonna because <laughs> because again, honestly, I, I I really feel like this is maybe even for me more than some of the earlier films. This is this is where it really gets good. It really gets to where again, there the pace is perfect. You know, again, the the the, the it's not a breakneck pace. It kind of it's 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 got its crazy action moments and there's down moments and they, they blend together perfectly. I love it. Oh, agreed. Uh, I just think it's, it's such a, the, the script is there too. It's, it's a really good script. Yeah. Um, and it has, uh, you know, they have this MacGuffin thing, but the MacGuffin isn't overdone or anything like that. And it's mm. um, the state, the stakes are there and you can understand them r- relatively easy. And this whole thing just flows very well. And they have uh, twists yeah. on characters and motivations. It's really great. Totally. I completely agree, honestly. And, and you know, and it, I find that this is a great example of where the MacGuffin script really does work, by the way. We, we kind of sort of touched on it before in other discussions. Um, but honestly, this is a great example of where Again, here's here's the MacGuffin. Here's the thing. We all have to get it, right? So the chase is on. And because you're not focused on the, the intricacies of the of the story, you can explore characters. You can get you can get into things like uh the character's motivation, the supporting characters. I mean, we haven't even talked about the bad guys yet that I think are awesome. I love the whole thing with Cristados. And Columbo, which also that's the one that is based on Rizzico. That's the that's the short story that that comes from, um, and that I think that is awesome. And I I think that's one of the only times that they've done that uh, in the Bond film. At least you know I, I guess they've had kind of turncoats or you know um, in some respects. But this is the only time I can think of where you had somebody who started off as his contact yes. or his ally. And then there was a switch. This uh, this guy's been crooked all along, uh, and Columbo ends up being a really nice, enjoyable character, and he sort of falls into that whole uh, Karen Bay, Draco Absolutely. mold. You know, a really likable uh, supporting character, uh, somebody who's a little older than Bond and has sort of his own worldly experience. I mean, he's great. The, the scene when. They bring in Bond and they're just talking and he's te- he's saying he's saying he's the dove and he's the one who he brings in heroin and and sex trafficking and all this other bad stuff and Bond's very skeptical at first but he but you know Bond he's not stupid either he knows he can judge his character I love that yeah, I love yeah, it love it great. love it and and played by two great actors Pooh uh, Julian Glover you know as a Cristados. Um, uh, yes. He had done, and, and he's been in uh, many uh, classic film and uh, oh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. He's in that. Um, he recently yep. appeared in Game of Thrones in a terrific role, a recurring role. Okay. And uh, I said, I'm always confused. Is it Topol or Topol? Topol. The smoker's tooth polish. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, a terrific actor. I loved him in Flash Gordon and uh, the 1981. And, yeah. Forget it, Ming. 
Dale's with me. And, and here, um, and of course, like Fiddler on the Roof and so forth. Terrific actor. And he's perfectly mm. cast here. Yeah. Both of them are. They're just terrific. That's what I like. I'd really? rather see. Yes. I'd rather see well-written villains like this and, and, and allies than, um, you know, CGI jumping off roofs. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You, you know. Yeah, absolutely. On, yes, I mean, on, the, this game of yeah. cat and mouse and the game of, of uh, the mind games, this battle of wits, you know, I mean, it just spot on. I think there's another, another thing that I, I really love about this era too is like we're still in the point where the speaking of CGI we're still in the same place mm. where um, CGI isn't prevalent yet so these guys like the helicopter scene yeah. the car chases all that stuff is shot yeah. for real and they had to do it you know in the real world mm -hmm. And uh, that's increasingly yes. rare now, because even if you see something like a new action film, and even if it looks realistic, they're always in the back of your head. Uh, you know, yeah. is there is there some CGI there? You know, but you don't have to question mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, it, they're, they're, those yeah. guys are doing it. Exactly. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the stunts are all and great. I, all and I think it adds great. a little something to the film itself, as far as the suspense and the action. Yes. I mean, seriously, you want to talk about a suspenseful scene? I think the rock climbing oh, scene. Oh, that's end. terrific! Holy smokes! I I, I think that's uh, when, uh, one of. I mean, you want to talk about like your your heart oh, is yeah. in your throat when he when he climbs up and the guy not, and he drops. <laughs> and that moment where he cat is you know ugh, like that that ugh, you know that that. When yeah. the jolt when when the when the when the thing catches him right before, oh boy I mean like you just feel the pain I remember right seeing there. this when this was first you know? uh, released and the whole audience gasped when he when he did that drop I mean it was uh, it was great it was like <gasps> you know the whole audience did the same thing right. at the same time and it was terrific yeah oh my god I mean if this was today that would have been something you would have watched in the oh night could you imagine you know I yeah. mean you would have like. Right, I mean, seeing that yeah. on the big screen, I mean, that would that would have been up there with like yes. Mission Impossible yes. of late. Yeah, that I mean, that's just awesome. I mean, I mean, seriously, in all stunts, I mean, that's just loony. You know what's? Good. It's been great. You know, we we talked about the teaser earlier and how great the teasers have been. You know, I mean, they they really sent the bench. You know, they started over the Spy Love Me in that great scene, and then they keep they keep up in the ante, yeah. and it's like it's really great. You know. And uh, the forthcoming yeah, Octopussy that we're going to talk about has, I think, another great opening. But I digress, you know? Yeah. Mm. No, yeah. you know, you're absolutely right. I, lo I love the... I, I really wish they did that more often because I feel like it's kind of a missed opportunity, you know, like to, to open the scene with... I mean, even the Indiana Jones used to sort of have this. They, they kind of got into the act where it would open up with what they would call the... the, the the grand finale of a previous mission. So you could just sort of get over the top and crazy without having to explain much and, and, and it doesn't have to connect with the bigger story. So it is kind of a missed opportunity. A lot of times we move into Cortina. And again, so much about this that I really, really love. One of the things just off the top is I love that this actually takes place at a ski resort area where people are skiing yeah. for leisure and you see bond skiing. Like he literally is just on skis because it's yes. a moment of leisure. You know, when when um when Holly's in his bed and then, you know he's like, "All right, I'll buy you yeah. an ice cream." And that's yeah. that whole scene happens, yeah. which is also great by the way. But then he's off on the skis and they just they're just floating around on skis and there's people there, tourists or whatever. So when the ski chase happens, it 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 kind of again just sort of feels like, "Oh yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like this is in some ways Again, I don't want to compare it to Honor Majesties, which is the granddad of the magnificent ski sequences, but I I think this is easily in yeah. second place. Um, mostly because again, it just feels realistic. Like it's it's almost like like again, the spy love me is it's it's capped off with an amazing stunt, and the skiing is good. It's all great, but again, you're kind of like, where is he? Like just on a on a cabin in the middle of nowhere just with this kind of beauty and so again it, it's it's just got a little cartooniness it's not bad but again there's it it doesn't sort of feel logical but here again it just it feels perfectly logical it's in a perfectly realistic setting so when the action just erupts it feels kind of realistic and i almost feel like this is the sort of like movie that where if i actually go skiing i'm kind of like got 
for your eyes only in my head because I'm I'm James Bond, <laughs> you know, skiing around these other you know slow skiers and stuff. And so I again I just all that attempt to keep it grounded is just so it pays off so well. You know I love the uh, little. Um, there's the chase. There's a lot. The way it, the, that chase starts and the suspense, and the uh, the guy um, sniper rifle. You know, and, and the guy yes. toying with him a little bit, and then his, yeah. and then him losing one of his poles, and then, and then those guys forcing him up onto the, you know, in the elevator, and then you have you even have yes. that little suspense scene where he's in the elevator and the doors close, and then they open again. And by the way, oh there Charles Dance in this too. Uh, yeah. Who's who was that? Which one is that? Uh, Charles Dance is um, you probably don't who he was recently in Game of Thrones, yeah. and okay. I think he has like one brief line in here. I think on the beach, and he's is like I think he's about to say get it, and then he gets harpooned. Get it. <laughs> That's the yeah, only line he has, but yeah. he's got like this terrific voice. He's a terrific actor, but I guess this is like nice. an early role for him. You were talking about when they were in the elevator. Yeah. And everything where they kind of again they sort of pressure him and they're following him and everything and nobody can really move because it's crowded, um, and then he just they, they do a ski jump, now, and again it the way this sort of fits into the film is great. Like I mean they I'm I mean they could do ski jumps in other films and sure, but I, I just really love it here because it's just it's a real place and you could actually do this. I mean it's just cool. No, absolutely. And uh one of the things I like about that, too, is like they're also setting up, uh, they're going to try to snipe him, too, as he's coming out. So, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and, then, yes. and that's Charles Dance, too. That Well, it's supposed to be Charles Dance coming out. All right. You know? flat, flat. It's great suspense. And then they do like some bobsled stuff, which is, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, I mean it's like, that? okay, we had that great bobsled scene in Honor Magic Secret Service. How do we top that? How about if he does it on skis? We're like, that pretty cool, <laughs> man. He has no, at that uh, point, I don't think he even has any ski poles. So the guy's just doing it, you know. It's, yeah, yeah. It's really impressive. Totally. Yeah. Oh, it, it really is. It really is. I mean, again, I just absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, and we kind of so. like, I, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead, I, but. I forgot. There's like a bunch of stuff, or action scenes in Cortina. There's that motorcycle scene, um, and uh, yeah, well, there's I mean, those it's... guys on the motorcycle and that chase. But there's like the original uh, yeah. when Melina shows up there, and there's that scene, and then mm-hmm. there's like the the, the hockey guys um, in the in the ice ring. I mean, yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah, so yeah, much right. stuff. It's just so jam packed. Yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah. totally. I mean, the motorcycle. Honestly, and that's the thing too. You're kind of reminding me the motorcycles in the oh, yeah. chase. They're going down they, the. They bo- have the little machine guns yeah. on the front. So I kind of feel like it's not like this movie's totally devoid of any gadgety sort of stuff either. Yeah. I mean, it still has, like I said. I mean, on paper, it, it feels like a like a still sort of a classic James Bond film, but just by keeping it kind of again down to earth. I feel like I'm going to say this like a million times in this review, but <laughs> it's. I mean, honestly, it, it's the it's the thing I I walk away with all the time is like you know again because it sort of feels. Like you could walk into this. I mean, again, this is a world you could walk into and step into. And and because of that, you can get away with a lot more. You know what I love too? There's a scene in the chase where he takes his pole and he puts it between the two trees, and then that motorcycle yes, dude hits yes, it. Yes. And it's like a whim is a wicked hurt, man. But yeah, boom. You know, yeah. totally. I think. Um, uh, and then we have a. I think it goes into like um, we do that. There's a casino scene that's really cool after they leave Cortina. Yes. Yeah. That's great too. You're absolutely right. I mean, again, I. I I'm really, you know, this is going to ter- start turning negative because honestly, the more I think about it, I'm just like, why aren't other movies doing more <laughs> of this stuff? Because, uh, yeah, I mean, again, they go into the casino and again, it, it's 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 not without purpose, but it, it has that total Fleming feel where he's he's in the casino playing against his opponents or at least trying to feel people out. But he's playing against like a random guy, Bunky. Um <laughs> So it's not at this point he's really sort of just playing just for enjoyment because he just sort of needs to be where he needs to be and and this is you know what he's going to do while he's there, uh, he's going to blend in and partake, uh, but even that that little sort of like scene against the bunky guy is is pretty good because again I, I like that he sort of outplays him a little bit, um, and he, he's he's meeting the countess by doing this played by um, played by so Cassandra great. Harris who at the time was married to Pierce Brosnan, yeah there you go. And uh, they, uh, supposedly a, they had, you know, they he had dinner with Albert R. Broccoli at at, uh, at some point there when, um, you know, so so there was like the early seeds of him be, eventually yes. becoming James Bond. But yeah, yeah, 
think, I think they say in a documentary that, that when they met him back then, it was, maybe it was um, uh, Broccoli's wife said, I think he'd make a good James Bond someday or something or other. At least that's, at least that's, that's right, what the prolific. <laughs> Yeah, but we were, so we were talking about the uh, the yeah. gambling scene, and again, I seriously, he he and Cristados are sitting at one table, just watching Columbo at the other table. That's great, and I love the little scene where the guy takes the yes. candle away, and inside the candle is the little tape tape cassette. Again, that's kind of classic spy yeah. stuff, but not no. over the top. It's not some sort of like weird gadget that doesn't look like it would actually work. <laughs> it looks totally believable. You know, and it's and it's placed. I mean, I wouldn't think to look in the candle for a tape deck or whatever. So I mean, it worked perfectly. Yeah, it's pretty brilliant when you stop to think about it. <laughs> you know, and again, that whole like honestly, that whole you're kind of getting back to just genuine spy stuff when literally like Bond goes to pick her up, and the guy even says, you know, like when the, when they when Columbo and his and Lisa will get into the fight, and he says this could be oppor- an opportunity. Go, oh, it could be a trap, but they. I asked, he asks her, they go home together, there's a lot of canoodling, and again, <laughs> you're, it's it's become apparent that he's trying to get information from her, but she basically reveals that she's trying to get information from him. So it's, again, you're talking about like classic Bond that goes back to like Dr. No and from Russia with and Love. even though the Countess has a short screen time, she's very memorable. There's even like that little moment, she's like, uh, she's like yeah. me nighty slipping, and he's like, so, you're, so is your accent. You know, and then it's, you, you learn that she's from Liverpool right. and you go, oh, so you got like, oh, I was thinking of her in a different way. But no, it's a little different. So that was kind of a neat little thing for her. And it doesn't have much to do after that, you know, but it was neat to get that little flavor. Yes, yes. You know? So, yeah, I mean, honestly, that I, I love that kind of intrigue. And by the way, the scene the next morning when Locke shows up. And there's a gunfight. I mean, I that's another great. Yeah, scene. Oh, they, when they're on the buggies, um, on the buggies. Of, yeah. Yes, totally. One of the things I noticed was again when they when they show up and all of a sudden like things all of a sudden get real serious and real dark when she runs and she yells and and her voice almost cracks it's it's like that moment tells you right like this is a terrifying moment this got yeah. really serious and this is you know what I mean so the whole tone of that scene changes and by the way when the guy just like just drives into her I mean that's a it pretty is. dark it is. moment right there that's a pretty dark, violent moment. So I, I like the realism. Oh, me too. And even the way uh, Moore reacts to that, you know, he's uh, he's like, Lisa, Lisa, come back, you know? Right, he, right. There's this, he, he, he seems kind of frazzled and stuff. And I, yeah, the, I do. I love that. Uh, so that's a, that's a great scene. And then again, he, and then when he even gets pulled in and he ends up in Columbo's office, that honestly reminded me a lot of the Draco scene in Honor Majesties. Yes. Right. You know, like the goons yeah. sort of pull him in, but you find out that this is going to be an ally. So that that sort of oh boy, is that great? Man, I love this movie. And then he says, "Yeah, Topol has a great line too." He says, uh, "I would laugh if my heart was not so heavy yes. for my poor Lisa." Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good line. yeah. And and I love it. Uh, supposedly uh, uh, for Topol, that was uh, his idea uh, for the pistachio nuts, which I think is great. Yeah. Which actually yeah. comes into play later, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. They were able to use that. That's great when they could do that. You know? Another, again, that's another great scene. You, you know, I I did a thing a while ago where I talked about, like, my wish list for future Bond movies. And I said, I, I wish that, like, the best ones would have, like, these little hints or moments that almost feel like a whole different spy film. Like, something, like, from John le Carre, Tom Clancy. And, and I kind of feel like the scene on the boat after when they when him and Columbo get together and the guys they went to to see this the, the operation and the big gunfight breaks out and there's a lot of sneaking around and and he just throws the pistachio nuts and the guy steps on that to me is like one of those scenes right I I feel like that's that's yes. kind of just almost like it, it's kind of not even James Bond for a second although it very much is in the in the traditional sense it, again it it almost gets like like a different kind of a spy movie. And it's got that kind of sense of mystery and intrigue, yeah. and I just love that. I love the use of silence yes. in that scene, too. Absolutely. Um, it's really good. Because then it builds up, you know? It builds up to the firepower. Because, you you know, when you're watching movies and it has a lot of gunplay and so forth, you can get a little numb to it yes. after a while. But this is a way to kind of, you know, you bring it down, you build yes. the suspense a little bit, and then and then, then you're into it again. And it gets you, yes. it's more exhilarating. Absolutely. I, again, you know, I, I almost feel like in, in the modern cinema, 
people just sort of forgot about suspense as a tool, you know, that like yes. as a tool to, 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 you know, to excite your, your viewers. And, and, and here it's in spades. I've always been sort of more of a fan of the buildup than the actual yes, like, action yes. scene sometimes. Absolutely. depending. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. And then of course that scene caps off with the scene of Bond just running up flights of stairs. This is one of the best <laughs> scenes in Bond history. No, this is no because if anybody's like, oh, Roger Moore, blah blah blah, he's oh, it's all goofy. This is a badass moment. Totally this is badass. Absolutely, absolutely, big and time. He, I mean, the, yeah, the, yeah, when he's got yeah. him in that precarious position, yeah, and the look on on Bond's face, yes. like when he takes the pin and he kind of looks at it, he's like. You yeah. left us at oh, oh, that's a great boy, moment. Great. And then and then just a the little sneer. And, and it goes and I love and, and and I'm not a huge fan of the Bill Conti score, but I do like this little sting he puts in there when they go to the wide yes. shot. The whole situation, the car, you know, yes. pretty much off halfway yes. off the cliff and everything. It's a great, it's a great moment because there's been, you know, they haven't done any music really up to that point. I mean, they've had some in the uh, in that the, mm. the, the shootout scene, but with him like running up those yes. stairs, which is great, and uh, trying to trying to catch up to the car, it's been all yes. done with silence. And then when he hits you with that music, oh it's God. really You're good. Not kidding, honestly, you know? I totally agree. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean it's a fantastic moment. I love the realism. I love the when you see the dummy fall out of the car at the bottom. You're like, oh, that's creepy. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, uh, it, the way it, it comes out, perfectly. it doesn't. I never. It doesn't look like a dummy to me. I mean, it looks. No, it's, it's it looks believable. really yes. good. Yeah. Yes. No. No. It is totally believable. I have yeah. no problem with that at all. I I, I. I. In fact, I almost feel like it was sort of dumb luck that the thing actually does sort of fall out the window. I don't know if that was intended. But, but it works. It, looks great. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Because because again, you want that little extra bit of 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 violence in this movie. You know that yeah. that little that little extra bit of more. But again, Liesel getting hit by the car, him flopping out of the window, his dead body coming out of the window. Yeah. Just that and, little hint, morbid hint of of violence right there is great. And that that great moment of him just you know pushing that car over, you know, <laughs> with his foot, you know, giving <clears> us <throat> that kick. The that sneer is, on his face at the second he does it is so good. And that bad it's a badass Bond moment. It really, it really is. is. It's it's Absolutely. one of the, and not just in the more, you know, uh fel, you know, mm. series of films. I, I, James Bond in general. Because yes. that to me is James Bond right there. Yes. Right I then, totally right agree. there. The submarine scene is great. When they're underwater in I, the heavy duty uh suits and everything i think the underwater scene for me might go on just a little bit too long it's it's good for what it is but i think mm -hmm. by that point in the film i kind of want to more um i would like things to move a little faster i think and uh they have a couple scenes they have a, i don't mind the initial trouble underwater but i've always mm -hmm. had that scene where that um one guy comes down and he's got that little boat and, yeah. uh, or a sub and he's like you know doo -doo -doo -doo, that whole stuff mm-hmm I always felt that was extraneous. Um, it's it's interesting on this. You know, you know, on the network television uh, version of it, they actually cut that whole scene out, and I think the movie flowed better without that scene. It's neat, but I think by that point we've had a lot of action scenes. And mm. We're near. We're getting closer to the end. And, uh, and by the way, you know, I love the scene of like you know, taken from Live and Let Die there when they. Um, yeah, they are being dragged across the coral reef. The keel you know? hauling scene, right. yeah. Yeah, but I'd say if I had a least favorite action scene, it's probably that underwater thing. Not the initial one. That's good with the bomb and the guy in the suit. That's all good. But then yes. that, that other sub coming down and trying to get that from them, mm -hmm. I think that's a little much. It's fine, but um, I, I always find myself drifting a little bit on that scene for whatever reason. But I'll, I'll give you that. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, I mean, that would, if they trimmed it a little bit, and I don't fine. think Conti's score is really doing much in there either. It's not my favorite piece of music either. So I guess that doesn't help me. Yeah. Either. I, I I will honestly, you know, now that we're talking about the score, I will say that there are a lot of really great moments in the score that I really like. Yeah, it's and a, a bit, lot of not so great moments. It's a bit hit and miss. But the film is so darn good. It's like it, mm. it skates away. Yeah, <laughs> it skates away. Yeah. yeah, 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 I, yeah, I agree, yeah. If this had been like maybe like a Barry score, <laughs> oh my god, this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I and totally Conte agree, did yeah. a bad job. He did a fine job. It's just that we've been so spoiled up to this point with the with the Barry mm. scores and even the George yeah. Martin score and Marvon Hamlish. So yeah, you know. Yeah. I, and I love Bill Conti. Bill Conti did a tremendous job, not only on the Rocky films, but in the Karate Kid films. I think his scores, yeah, yeah, his scores to the Karate Kid films might even be better than the Rocky stuff, which is really good. But anyway, mm-hmm. I digress. Totally agree with you on the Kill Hall scene. By the way, I I love it. And I love how he gets out of it. Yeah, it's it's totally I believable. Mean, yeah, totally the, believable. The, totally bond in his wits. The only thing I'd say is that maybe you know they got that spare tank down there. That may be a little bit like story plotty, <laughs> but that's okay. And, and I don't know if you ever tried underwater, but I tried to do that underwater with a thing. It doesn't work because all the water still gets in your mouth, you know. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> but I, I, I will. I'll give you that. I, mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's like guys, it's a big ocean. Yeah. The right. idea that they'd be right in that spot. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I, I'll, yeah, I'll give you that. I mean, I've tried it. Uh, I've tried it one time. You know, I said, "Well, if Bond can do it," I'm like, <laughs> a mouthful of water. I was like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So what'd you think about the climax? What'd you think about when they, I mean, the, when they go to the monastery and <laughs> Wait, again, forgive me, father, some... for I have sinned. Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. That's putting it mildly 007. <laughs> that's putting it. Oh, mildly. that's yes. yes, yes. <laughs> what, what a great Q well, moment. That was, too. Yeah, that was a great Q moment. It really was. Yeah. So, yeah, so it takes them to the monastery. And then again, you, you have, you have what I think is a really good finale um, I don't know if I would call it a big climax, though, necessarily. I, I feel like the movie concludes, and it works for me. I, I, I find it very satisfying. Oh, yeah. But I, I wonder, like, would, are, do, do some people feel like it's not a big enough climax to the ending or whatever? I I never had a problem with it. It You know, I don't... I think this is sometimes, if I may, for a second, mm-hmm. um, and maybe I might anger some people. I don't know, but I, I hope not. Um I think sometimes fans can be like the worst enemy in a way sometimes to this because yeah, they yeah. they have certain criteria like, oh, there's got to be a big climax and it's, oh, the climax is not big enough. Well, is it pertinent to this story? You know, um, I don't think a big ass like volcano, you know, every, you know, all these sides coming in and, you know, uh, shooting at each other is uh, would be right for this story. You know, mm. and I think it should always be. Uh, about serving the story and what makes sense for the story at hand, like in From Russia yeah. to Love as well, a big uh, you know a big climax with uh, two opposing sides shooting at each other mm-hmm. wouldn't be right, um, and and I think this works. Um, I think the mountain climbing is spectacular, suspenseful. Um, I find the uh, yeah. the final assault very suspenseful and uh, the little, the mm-hmm. fight scenes. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I I think it's a great one, and again, I love how the action is very grounded. I love when she shoots the guy with the the crossbow, and as opposed to like another film where she would have got him right in the heart, dead, right. die, we move on, or something else a little more cinematic, he falls off the mountain or whatever. Nope, they drag him in. They try to keep him quiet. She kind of she actually I like the fact that she actually like tends to his wound. <laughs> you know? I, I, I kind of find that again. It's 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 a very realistic touch. And Columbo's having none of it. He's like, oh, I'll take it. Don't worry about him. I'll be with you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I that's great. I I love that. Again, and, and again, shows their character. And also too, Melina Havlock is a strong female character. She's very yes. capable, can take care of herself. And there's times when she gets into trouble, but she, and she and she has but she has a feminine way about her which I really love. Um she's mm-hmm. not like just a, you know, just taking over a man's role, you know what I mean? And it's yep. written as a female, which is which is terrific. And I think um, you know, maybe the Bond films get criticized sometimes for having, uh, and, and it's true sometimes, you know, we'll see that the, there's not the, the strongest female characters all the time, but, uh, the, throughout the history of the Bond films, they've had strong female characters and Melina Havoc is definitely one of those. So since I keep getting hell for my scores, I want to, I want to do a little, uh, <laughs> presentation. Okay. What I'm holding in my hand, these are, uh, these are. These are the scores for all of the uh, films. Uh, I blurred out the ones that we have not done yet. Uh, the ones that we did do are here. Uh, but basically, what I wanted to sort of show you is when I did the Bond scores, I did it much differently because I figured my my lowest one here is Diamonds, right? So against all my other Bonds... It's a one, but in the bigger scheme of things, I would probably call that like a seven compared to like other movies. 
You know what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Um, <clears throat> so basically what I did was I literally took, I picked out my favorite Bond movie and I called it a 10. I picked out my least favorite and called it a one. And then I just sort of went in between and just decided, I mean, cause again, I don't want to score everything seven to 10 cause then I feel like the tens don't even have that much punch. Uh, so I wanted to sp space it out. So my least favorite was a one. My most favorite was a 10. And then I just started to fill in. Okay. Now with that range in mind, where do they all fall? So, so again, like, like, a five here is is nothing to be ashamed of at all. It's like, like I said. I mean, you know, I would call Diamonds Are Forever like like a seven in the bigger scheme of of films. Um, but again, I wanted a, a wide range of of um, of scores. I wanted them to be more accurate. So again, like if I just chose, if I just did seven to ten, I would literally have like it'd be like one, two, three, and four. You know, so I wanted to, to sort of space it out a little bit. So this is sort of how it all fell. So again, so like my scores are not as harsh as I think they like they come across sometimes. But that's anyway, I wanted to sort of clear that up and just sort of say this is this was my my method for how I scored the movies. Yeah. But, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so should we go back and redo all these now? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I struggled with this one a little bit because I knew I knew right out the gate this is a nine without without question, but I was like, is it a ten? Um, because I had become um, well, I give a spy a love me a ten, which may be a little controversial, um, and of course from Russia with Love on Imagine Secret Service. Is it in a league with those films? You know, and there's a couple little nigging things in this like the uh the blow the bull field crack you know about the delicate test and the, it's just really out of place here um the conti score as we discussed is a little hit and miss but everything else is so superb um i think i <laughs> i think i gotta go with the 10 it's it's maybe it's like a maybe a soft 10 am i, am I cheating saying that no nah, it's a 10 it's a 10 uh it probably would be a higher 10 if it had uh, like a score, like a, a better score, I think, or this, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, there's too many great moments in here, you know, there's, there's, there's some great action scenes and um, so many terrific moments that I think it deserves its 10 status. And I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to be bold and stick with it. I, I thought for sure this time I was going to outdo you in, in, as far as the high score goes. But um, I gave this a nine. And but again, I mean, it's like I said, I mean, I've been gushing and gushing for, you know, however long. Uh, I think it's an absolutely spectacular film. I just happen to have some others that I think literally, you know, I can I can pretty safely call flawless. And, and this one, I think, is just shy of flawless, frankly. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to give it a nine. And again, I, I think this is absolutely positively the sweet spot that the series hits um and it has it's had other sweet spots I, I agree but honestly as far as what i really want from a bond film that that perfect blend of sort of realism uh with with exciting over the top moments but with with romance uh again a little of the good life, a little of the the traveling, a little of Bond exploring, a, a new location. I, I, so that elegant world. I mean, it, it really just sort of has everything and it has it in the right amounts. So, yeah, I think, again, I, I will call this just just shy of being perfect. So I'm going to give it a and I'll, I'll even call it a high nine. I'm going to steal the um, I'll buy you a delicate test and stainless steel crack. Don't like that. That that just offset this terrific scene and then that that goofy thing. I don't know. It just it doesn't work for me. Um, everything else is fine. There, there might be a couple things with the score that I don't like. Very discoy stuff that when the action scenes are that are eh, not 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 that great. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go with the stainless steel crack from Blofeld. They disrespected the Blofeld man. I'm gonna go with the score. And I'm I'm actually even a little surprised that I'm saying that because I mean I think for years. Um, I never had a real problem with it, but I, as I was watching it today, there were a couple times when I was watching, uh, like an action beat or usually, and I just sort of said, you know what? I wonder what Barry would have done. I, I, and again, if I'm thinking that consciously, that's not a good thing. 
Uh, I, I noticed like at the beginning of the bobsled run, there, there's there's a, a really kind of boppy disco-y kind of thing going on there. And I'm just kind of going, yeah, I'm not getting it. It's almost like he seemed to be running out of ideas at that point. And he was just kind of making music to fill up space. Uh, part of that ski chase has got great music. And then other things just kind of gets wonky. And I kind of find that throughout the film. There, Again, some of it's great. And some of it, yeah, not so much. So, yeah, I'm going to call that the weak point. I think it's got to be that mountain climbing scene. And I hope I hope I didn't steal yours, but uh, um, yeah, that's a terrific sequence. And to see that uh, to see an actual stunt guy doing the, doing that mountain climbing, and the thrill of that, and uh, back in the, I still remember, the, and I'll, I probably will never forget it. That back in the day, the the audience gasped when he fell. Um, yeah, it's it's a hard it's it, it's a great scene. It's just terrific, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's up there with some of the great Bond action scenes. Uh, I'm with you there, and yeah, you did steal my uh, the mountain climbing scene. <laughs> I know. I was trying not to. <laughs> it's okay though, honestly, because I I said to myself, I'm like, you know, of all the great action pieces, I just feel like, boy, if I had to pick something, it would have been that that one drop off of the mountain because I think it's absolutely it's got I think it's one of the best stunts of the whole series, frankly. Um, but since you took that one, uh, I will actually go back to the car chase, which, again, I think is a fantastic car chase. And again, like the moment there's a moment where like uh, the, the bad guys are right on top of them and he just hits the brake and swerves a little bit and they end up crashing into each other. Again, it's just Bond and his wits. And I love how the, the scene is sort of kicked off by the exploding Lotus. Again, it's it's a very conscious decision to say to the audience, we're doing it without the gadgets this time. It's not going to be another button pushing, you know, no oil slicks, no nothing else. Uh, and again, I'm not it's not a knock on those great scenes, but I like the return to just Bond using his wits here. So and, and they they kick it off correctly. The execution is spectacular. I love all of it. So I'm going to give it to that. So that is uh, for your eyes only. Another good one, Scott. Thank you very much for uh, and, uh, thank being you. here. Hope you enjoyed it as always. Oh yes, I have, and thank you very much. <laughs> good afternoon, <laughs> head of section. It's a rich gate. Do not concern yourself with your co-host. One of our less. Useful YouTubers. Dead <laughs> 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 <laughs>